Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have a video as part of my How I Would Adapt series. I've been going through and talking about my, some of my favorite book series and how I would adapt them in different ways. I've talked about the Rune Lords, I've talked about how I would do the Cosmere, I've talked about um, uh, how I would do the, the Steelheart trilogy, a lot of things like that. Today I'm going with a bit of a different route, and today I'm going to be talking about how I would adapt the Ted Decker series, his, his uh, fantasy and political thriller blend series uh, with a little bit of religious fiction called the Circle Series, featuring the books Black, Red, White, and Green. Real, real original titles here. Um, I'll talk about some of the things like the production budget, what it would need to break even, um, a lot of different ideas like that, that I think would, um, ways that I would do it in that I think would help it actually earn money. So the first thing I'll say is this might be controversial among fans of the series, but I would focus on adapting it as a trilogy of black, red, and white and not doing green yet. Maybe one day perhaps in my I, this, I, this idyllic future of making the series, you do green down the line. But for what I'm talking about, I'm just talking about doing the trilogy. For one, because green is very divisive. Some people love it, some people hate it. I'm on the disliking it side. But also because it kind of changes the way you view the series. The, the three books were written together as a trilogy. And then green was written later on. So I'm gonna focus on the trilogy. Oops, I'm sorry, didn't mean to hit that. So let me talk about some of my notes on how I would do it. So first of all, th uh, this has to be movies. These books are too short to be TV shows, and I think that they would not properly connect with audiences if they were TV shows. Um, so that's why I'm gonna suggest them being movies. Um, the second thing is, uh, who would I? What what studio would I have produce this? I think Paramount could pull this off well. Um, I don't think Disney would be interested because this is in one of their IP and also they're trying to distance themselves from religious stuff at the moment, um, or at least from Christian stuff. Uh, and this series is overtly a Christian series, but if you're a fan of fantasy and political thrillers, this is still, I think, readable, uh, still a really fun series. Um, and I would uh, say that you could focus on that. There is a way to appeal to secular and religious audiences at the same time while still telling a big blockbuster story. There's a way to make this four quadrant, and I think, I think I'll outline how. But So I think Paramount might be the best. Warner Brothers just is so cash poor nowadays, they just don't have the money to, they have to focus on other things. Sony could do it, but I don't think they'd want to. And then maybe Universal. Universal actually is the other one. Paramount and Universal would be the best places for this to go. Although really any, anyone could do it. Who would I get to direct that? Well, there are some small-time filmmakers that have made smaller movies. The Irwin brothers, I think, they've made smaller movies, but I think they could level up for this. Uh, this series doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be like Avengers-level budgets, but um, I think they could handle this. I also think um, uh, some people who have done some big blockbuster movies could do this, um, uh, but I'm not sure that they would all want to. So uh, let's talk about budgets. This is the type of series that you can't blow the budget huge because this is, well, I think you could get this to a four quadrant audience. It's not gonna be a huge four quadrant audience. I would suggest with this making the budget about 70 million. The fantasy places in this, uh, the, the fantasy elements, you can easily shoot on something like the volume. And I think audiences would be okay. In fact, it's kind of meant to have kind of an ominous feel to it, which means that you wouldn't have to have this huge set. And then the stuff that's the political aspects, you could you reuse sets from other studios. So you don't have to break the bank on this series. Um, and if you shoot them all together as a you know trilogy, you would even bring the cost down even more. But I'm just saying, if you just shoot the first one black as a, as a movie, I think you could do it for about 70 to $80 million. I think that's a really realistic range. You don't have to break the bank on actors because I don't think a lot of actors would be interested, big actors would be interested, but you could get a few of them and I'll talk about that later. And I think when it comes to um, production value, you know, you don't need to go crazy big on this. 70 to 80 million is a solid, solid budget for this, but not too big. 
M- meanwhile, marketing. Some movies have a hundred plus million dollar marketing budgets. You don't need that for this series. I think something in the forty to fifty million dollar range is what you'd need. Um, uh, got enough money to get it out there so people know about it, but not so much that you're breaking the bank. I think that people who are fans of like the Narnia uh, movies would come out for this because it's in a similar style to that. I think that fans of political thrillers will enjoy this, fantasy fans. It has, uh, I think, good appeal there. And then, of course, as I mentioned, I think religious audiences, uh, particularly Christian religious audiences, um, would appreciate this as well. Um, so with that said, that budget between the production and the marketing would be about 100 to 130, somewhere in there. That means that you only need to do about 200 or 250 million worldwide to break even. And with a lot of these mid-budget, which I can't believe $70 million is mid-budget nowadays, but with a lot of these mid-budget movies, the money isn't entirely made at the box office. The money uh, is also partially made in digital and streaming. Uh, Streaming, not so much, but a lot of digital. There was a news article that came out in June of this year that basically talked about how Universal made a billion dollars from their movies on on digital because of the... Um, way that they did it and while this one one movie would not do that this could make up some of the price so if you release this movie you have a good product you have a good production you have like solid storytelling good script all that stuff i think that it could do in the 100 to 150 million dollar range maybe even better maybe even better and of course this is worldwide it would probably be one of those movies that's primarily an american audience but you never know i think it could have a good worldwide haul and then you could make it um uh put it on digital and on physical release and you could make up the gap and i think enough people would watch it on digital and watch it on physical release that would get people and excited uh a good comparison for this is with Into the Spider-Verse, it made up its production budget, but it didn't make a lot of money at the box office, but it went on Netflix, and it did amazing on Netflix. People found it and enjoyed it. So when the second movie, Across the Spider-Verse, came, it exploded at the box office, and it made the studio a ton of money. And so I believe that, that similar. this is a similar type thing where you don't need to make a huge amount of money on the first film as long as you between all the revenue streams kind of get close to breaking even i think that you can justify doing sequels because then the sequels would probably break even and make money in their theatrical runs at the box office and then make even more on digital and streaming so that is my uh oh uh, uh, as i mentioned style i think you could make it very narnia-esque um, but I think you could use the volume that they use for, uh, for Star Wars. I think you could use that volume really well, that stagecraft technology. And then uh, for leading actor, there is one actor that would be fantastic in the role and I think would be a great fit, and I think he'd be great in the role, and that's Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt probably wouldn't take this because if you do it, like I'm saying, to do 70 to 80 million, you can't spend money on Chris Pratt. He's too much money, too big an actor. But there's another actor who I think would take the role and would do a good job with it if you had this budget and these directors involved. And this actor has worked with these directors that I mentioned. And this actor is Zachary Levi. Zachary Levi is very familiar with both uh, faith-based audiences um, uh, from his faith-based films he's made and from his secular audiences with Shazam and Shazam 2. Now, Shazam 2 didn't make a lot of money, but the first Shazam did. And Zachary Levi has shown that he has potential. Um, although he's ticked off a lot of people recently, so maybe not. But those are that is my pitch for how to do this series. It's not going to work for everyone. Some people just won't see it because of the religious connotation. Some people just won't see it because it's not going to look as good as you know the big epic fantasy movies or or TV shows and stuff. But I think it could draw enough of an audience to make small small profits. So if you are um, uh, uh, if, if you've watched this video, what do you think about it? Do you think it's possible or do you think it's impossible? How would you do it if you were given the uh, keys, the opportunity to, if you were a producer? Let me know all those thoughts in the comments section down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.